In this tutorial video, we're going to check out the Point Blank MIDI Router Ensemble. This reactor ensemble has a number of potential uses and basically outputs the MIDI notes that the Complete Control software generates, and a number of people have been wanting to get access to these. It may be in future updates that Native Instruments offer the feature to output or export MIDI similar to Machine. So as you probably know, you can play a variety of different scales using the Complete Control software from standard, major and minor right through to eastern scales. As as well as trigger a whole range of chords and use the onboard arpeggiator. If you didn't know, then you can check out our Complete Control Scales and Arps video where we demonstrate some of the capabilities. Now many DAWs already offer scale functions and arpeggiators and in a previous video I showed a workaround how we can record in the notes from Logic's arpeggiator for editing. But in this video we're going to look at how to set this ensemble up using an instance of Complete Control as an AU plugin and also running Reactor in standalone. We cover Reactor and other elements of Complete in our sound design course and diplomas here at Point Blank. So make sure you head over to pointblanklondon.com and you'll also be able to find the link to download this ensemble. This ensemble works by basically routing the MIDI out from Complete Control using OSC and then routing the MIDI back into your host. It's necessary to configure it this way as MIDI output from AU plugins is still not widely integrated. I must stress that this ensemble is a workaround, so it's not perfect by any stretch and involves some setting up initially and using it in a specific way. So the first thing you need to do is to download the file from Point Blank's website and unzip it. Then we're going to load up Logic and on a software instrument track, we're going to open an instance of Complete Control. It's possible to install this ensemble so it appears in the browser, but for now I'm just going to open it directly from my desktop. Then to set it up, we'll need to edit the settings. So let's come to this triangle here, down to View, choose Edit View, click on this little icon to enter Edit Mode. And now we can set up OSC by coming to this triangle, down to File, choose OSC Settings. And I'm going to activate OSC and then click on OSC Send and click on the New button. And I'm going to type in PB. The IP address we're going to type as 127.0.0.1. And that will basically root OSC internally. And then the port number I'm going to type in 10,000 and one, click on close. Then if you click on this icon here, right click on where it says OSC send and choose properties. Select the connect tab and you just need to make sure it says PB here. If it's not there, then go to add target and then select PB from the list. Let's jump back to the panel. So now if I play a note and look over here, you can see MIDI's coming in and OSC is going out. Now the sound you actually hear is this synth here. It's just a basic synth purely for auditioning purposes. So next what we need to do is to open up the Reactor standalone. It's already opened up the plugin, okay, but you go to File, Open, and load it off your desktop. And then we'll also need to configure this. So let's go up to the file menu, down to OSC settings, and receive port, we want to change this to 10,000 and one, and then activate OSC. So now again, if I play a note, you can see it's now receiving OSC, and now I just need to configure the MIDI output. So back to file, down to audio MIDI settings, come over here to MIDI, and then we're gonna select outputs. And I'm looking for Reactor 5 virtual output. I'm gonna turn this on. Once this is done, you won't need to do it again. And you can just see there, Logic's recognized that it's got an additional MIDI input set up now. And finally, we're just going to right click here so we can choose instrument properties. If that doesn't come up, then you just need to make sure you are clicking in a space. So click on connect tab, and we're going to come down to external devices, and I'm going to select Reactor 5 virtual output. And that is now configured. Now, don't play your keyboard at this point because that will create a MIDI loop. So I just need to enable standalone receiver and then jump back to Logic. So to stop it feeding back, I'm just going to click on here where it says no send. So we'll still be able to hear the keyboard. 
but it prevents the feedback loop. So what we want to do is access the scales and arpeggiator mode from within Complete Control Software. So I'm going to click on that button there. Let's choose scale and switch the chord mode on to harmonizer. Choose minor. OK, so there's a minor chord. If I click on record, and then open this up, you can see although we hear a chord, it only actually records in one note. So this is where the ensemble comes in. Let's just quantize that and tighten up the timing a bit. Choose a 16th note. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new track. And I'm going to set up just a default instrument on it. Let's go for something like electric piano. So what I need to do is just send the MIDI out from here. So choose OSC send. Close that down. So it's important that you only have your new software instrument track record enabled before clicking on record. Otherwise, it will create a feedback loop. So let's just move this later by a bar and then click on record. So you can hear there's a latency issue. And this is related to plug-in delay compensation. It actually means the MIDI notes arrive earlier than they should. However, let's open this up, close that down, and you can see clearly here are the MIDI notes. So what I suggest you do is just do select all and then drag these back onto the beat. Okay, if it's a regular amount of latency, then you could obviously use a delay setting, but there is always going to be a little bit of variation in timing. So if you use this, what I suggest you do, shift them onto the beat and then make use of quantize to tighten the timing up. So to hear those back, I'm going to take off record. Okay, so we've now captured our chords as MIDI notes. So this works for the arpeggiator as well. So let's just create an empty MIDI region here, drag it out. I'm just gonna create a held note there. Let's zoom out a bit and uh, close that down. Move it across here and within complete control, open it up and we can switch on the arpeggiator mode and we could obviously edit the settings but let's come back here for now again make sure we've got the software instrument track selected hit on record and there our notes are recorded in open it up and then again select all so command a and then just drag across and drop it in time and then again, I suggest you quantize that to make sure the timing is absolutely spot on. So that's how to set up and use the point blank MIDI router in Logic. The ensemble is supplied as is, but if there's enough interest, we may look at updating it in the future. So we're now going to take a look at how to do this in Ableton. So I'm running the 64-bit version of Ableton. I'm going to open up an instrument rack and then drop in the Complete Control VST instrument rack. VSTs have much better MIDI integration than audio units and now let's click on files and go to the desktop and here is the point blank MIDI router so open this up then let's come down here to edit view click on the edit mode button and now we can set up the OSC send so little triangle here file OSC settings and this is already activated the receive is on 10,000 and the send, let's come here, type in PB and then 127.0.0.1 and then the port is going to be 10,001. Too many zeros. There we go. And close that down. And now let's just click on this icon here. Right click on where it says OSC send and choose properties. Click on connect. And we need to make sure that it says PB there. Again, if it's not there and it looks like that, go to Add Target and add it from the list. Jump back to the main instrument. I'm just going to turn off hints. And that's now set up. So let's close down Complete Control. And now I'm going to insert a VST Reactor plugin. So React 5, drop that on there. And again, let's go to the File menu, Recent Files. PB MIDI router and let's set up the OSC 
settings again. So receive on port, this needs to be 10,001. And activate OSC. And then we can close that down. Then we also need to switch to standalone receiver. Let's click on the edit button here. And then finally, we just need to choose instrument properties and make sure that it's routed out to the plugin. And that should all be ready to go. So if I just put a clip in there, let's just get a long note in. That will do. Open up complete control. Turn on the scale function here. And let's choose harmonizer and then turn on the ARP as well. When we press play, we get a little C minor arpeggio. So all we need to do now is create another MIDI track. And let's name this Notes. And then set up the MIDI input here from Reactor. And again, choose Reactor 5 here. And let's record and label that. Also need to turn Monitor on. And now what we should find... is the notes from the arpeggiator are now recorded directly into Ableton. You'll probably notice, and can probably see, that the timing isn't absolutely spot on, so it might be worth just grabbing those notes, dragging them to the nearest beat, and then quantizing them. And all done. So that's how we can get the MIDI out of the Complete Control plugin and record that into a clip within Ableton. If you're interested, we've got more free plugins available on pointblanklondon.com. And if you're into arpeggiators, make sure you check out the Ableton Live Funky Arp, which runs in Max for Live. Mm -hmm.